This is a demon sheep. This is a flame spino. And this is some idiot in a fox mask running around in circles. In this video, I have 100 days to beat two of Ark mods, Eternal and Prometheus. Can we meet the challenge? Let's find out. Well, here we are starting off a brand new 100 days journey. Now, of course, like we all must know by now, we have to start by punching some trees because that's how you collect wood. Then we admire the jellyfish that's spitting lightning out of its, out of its where, wherever. Oh, wow. Yeah, the lightning hurts. We died. I wake up once again, only to see that we are surrounded by some big scary T-Rexes with the uh, turrets on their back. This mod is quite strange. And yes, we get destroyed by a fire Indominus Rex. I didn't even see the fire Indominus Rex kill us. Okay, so we've died twice already in, you know, only a couple minutes. Surely this time nothing's going to attack us and it will be all fine. Let's pick some berries. Oh, hey, there's another human in the game. Wait, is he chasing us? Oh, wait, yes, you know, he's definitely chasing us. Does he have a fox mask on? And yeah, we died again. This is going to be one interesting 100 days. Okay, this time I'm going to take it serious. We spawn on these islands, which I'm pretty sure are safe. We do the traditional smack some trees for wood, create some tools, harvest some stone. And the cheese way of getting a few extra levels in this is by crafting some chibis. Once we have reached a decent level, we then go ahead and craft this poison spear. Hopefully it can knock out something that we can tame. That's going to protect us from some of the dangers in this world. Okay, so we haven't died in a while so i think it's time for us to make some armor i decided to make this desert cloth armor because there was an engram there that i could use and it was cheap now that we're not running around naked it might be a lot easier to make some friends after all kind of creepy trying to make friends when you're only wearing your underwear i then go ahead and poke this trike with our spear and it mustn't have done that much damage because uh it just fell asleep on us we let it rest for a while we'll come back to it when it wants to be our friend while waiting for the track to wake up i spotted this dodo that just kept pooping out eggs looked like it was quite um fertile so i tried shoving some berries up its butt but eggs kept coming out until eventually it settled and the dodo became our friend so we named it subscribe yes shameless plug i then picked up subscribe and uh yeah my my head was in its butt it was um quite an interesting place to be i suppose by now our trike was ready to wake up with some berries that it was eating it woke up became our friend finally and we named him bart he reminds me of bart from simpsons because he's got spiky hair we whacked the saddle on him that we had made earlier and started to ride around traveling over to some of the local islands to see what else we could find around this area only to find some more dangers but bart handled his business Thanks to having Bart around, we killed a few of these dinos, only for us to be killed ourselves from a vulture. I forgot they could kill you off the back of dinos. Later on, we collected Bart and subscribe and then continued on our journey. And yes, we met another one of those pesky little humans that once again killed myself, Bart, and our new dodo friend, subscribe. We're gonna have to start from scratch all over again. This is annoying. Three days in and our progress isn't really going how I'd planned. So we down another trike with a poison spear. And while we wait, we go and poke this robot parasaur. And it's a lot stronger than I thought it was gonna be. We respawn and we tame this trike and we name him Bart 2 or Bart the second, wh whatever you want to call him. We ride Bart through the water only to be chased down by this red jellyfish. And we already know we don't want to mess with them. It knocks us straight off of Bart. We keep trying to swim away and we get taken out. I'm pretty sure Bart the second is already dead too. This time we head over to the mainland, find a trike, poke it with a stick and knock it out. Our goal right now is to find a safe location that we can call home and make a base. I placed down some stone foundations, a refining forge, and a bed so we can at least respawn. And now the track is fully tamed and we name it Bart 3. I'm pretty confident that this Bart will outlive its predecessors. I immediately jump on the back of Bart and run up the mountain, hoping that we can find some metal or some crystal or some higher tier resources. And yeah, we did. We found some crystal, I mined it, we found some metal, I mined that too. Now we're finally making some good progress. Now that we had some metal cooked up, we went straight ahead to make ourselves a smithy, placed it down, and now we can make some metal tools. Metal tools in hand, we went straight back to collecting a ton of resources, knowing very well we needed to finish this base off. I want to enclose it because I'm kind of scared of everything around us. All right, I'm feeling pretty happy that we're starting to make some decent progress. It's time to go out and tame some decent dinos that will actually help us further along our journey. The first dino that we decided to tame was this elemental fire trike. It was close to base and we know it's a step up from vanilla. This is where I learned that eternal berries basically tame them instantly and they're easy to collect. Once tamed, we jumped on its back, rode around, attacked a few things and it does a significantly good damage. Next up, we were fortunate to find this poison trike and I'm assuming that they deal torpor damage which will help us tame some higher tier dinos, maybe. And of course, we creatively named him Poison Bart. We started day five off by standing still in our base, then standing still outside our base. Once we were finished with our exhilarating standing stillness, we went out to go try and find ourselves a PT to tame. But on our way out, something shot me and put me to sleep. 
and while laying here asleep, I started to dream about War Thunder. I have been playing hours of War Thunder. Why you may ask? Well, that's simple. That's because War Thunder has over 2,000 tanks, airplanes, helicopters, and warships that you can play with, making it the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. And it's free to play. They have almost every military style vehicle from the 1920s all the way up until this present day. I personally like driving around in my M1A1 tank. I am a little biased. It is the Australian one. You can tell with the kangaroo sign on it. You can join me personally in any one of these game modes if you download War Thunder now on PC, Xbox Series XS, or PlayStation 5. All you need to do is click my link in the description and download War Thunder for free now. As an added bonus, when you use my link, you will receive a large in-game bonus pack with multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters, and a few other goodies you're just going to have to discover when you download. Thank you, War Thunder, for sponsoring this video. That was a weird-ass dream. Well, after we woke up, we went back to finding a PT, and that's when we saw this cursed PT. I threw a bowler at it, locked it into place, and died. Yeah, somehow I died to a ginger ninja, whatever that is. We respawned, went to go collect our stuff, and that's when my chat told me that you can't actually tame cursed PTs. They have to be evolved only. Later on that day, I spotted a vanilla PT, so I bowled it, knocked it out, and started to tame it. While it was knocked out, I noticed that there was another one close by. And you know, two is always better than one. Once tamed, we named this PT Lisa. And creatively, I named the second one Lisa 2. On the morning of day 6, I woke up with heat stroke. I guess sleeping in a box made out of stone might do that to you. I wanted to get rid of this heat stroke, so I ran outside, jumped off the cliff, landed in the water to try and cool down. After a nice refreshing dip, our heat stroke started to cool down a little bit, and I really couldn't wait to go fly on our brand new PT. So I got him out, put a saddle on him, and started to fly off. We still had a little bit of heat stroke left, so we flew over to the snow area just to try and get rid of that last little bit. I was feeling pretty confident with our progression so far, and I knew there was wyverns on this map, so I headed over to where I thought they were, the volcano area, and see if I could snatch an egg or two. Flying around, I did see a couple wyverns and noticed they were really fast. I wasn't too sure if we were fast enough to outrun one, and uh, I see wyverns. I don't think I'm fast enough to outrun. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Famous last word. Yeah, so I already lost my first PT in the first day of owning it. No surprise there. I ended up finishing this day off by taking Firebite out to go and kill some dinos around our area to try and get some more resources. We took on an Eternal Alpha Arneo and uh, yeah, the piece of crap spider killed us. Luckily for us, we tamed two PTs a couple days ago. So I took Lisa 2 out to go and explore this entire map that I've never been on before, Ebonus Astrum. We had a nice big plains biome that has, seems to have quite a few dinos out there. This area that reminds me of Extinction and turns out to be a King Titan summoning area. And then of course the volcano area that uh, we're not gonna get too close to right now. Day eight, we took Poison Bite out to go see what it can kind of do. We fought this poison turtle, and I noticed I wasn't doing any torpor damage. I'm assuming it doesn't do any torpor, or maybe it doesn't do torpor against poison dinos. But one really strange thing it does do is shoot lightning out of its mouth. That's kind of odd, but hey, I'll take it. We did, though, encounter this lightning PT. Now, I know that that's the next tier up, and they definitely knock dinos out. We definitely need this to be able to tame some of those high-tier dinos. But I'm unsure if I have what I need to be able to knock it out. But you know me, it's worth a try. Let's go. Huh. Yeah, I guess it wasn't really that hard, huh? Once tamed, we named this one Lightning Lisa. Now that we have Lightning Lisa, I didn't want to waste any time being able to progress in this mod. So I took it out and found this Alpha Eternal Trike, knowing very well that that would be our next step up in our progression. It had 1.3 million torpor. Now that's a lot, but turns out Lightning Lisa does a fair bit of torpor damage. This just might take a while. I'm pretty confident this is going to work out. We finally got it knocked out, I fed it some berries, and we tamed this beast. But then the unthinkable happened. We got attacked by a prime raptor, and I was sent straight back to my bed. I was now informed, because we have the internal mod, you can craft this item that helps you get all your inventory back from your corpse. So I quickly whipped that up, put it in the corner, pressed the button on it, and magically got all my gear back. Little OP, but uh, I'll take it. Thank you, Mr. Eternal Mod Maker. I quickly grabbed Lisa 2 and flew back to the location of our death. Once I got there, I made quite the mistake. Oh, I pressed E, not freaking T. Oh my God, what an idiot. I pressed the wrong button. Wait, what if I soul ball one of these and then I die? So yeah, I died for a second time and basically lost our only flyer that we had available. But I had a little bit of a big brain move. I spawned at a location that I knew that was pretty close to where I died. I ran over there on foot and I could see Lightning Lisa in the distance. That's where I whistled her over to me, jumped on her back, and then we were safe. Now, I just needed to try and figure out a way to get our Alpha Trike back. Oh, 
I don't need to figure out a way. The raptor killed it. Well, this day kind of sucks. I'm going to call it a day and head back to base. Oh, for f sake. It's a brand new day. Hopefully this day is a lot better than the previous one. We head on out on Lightning Lisa and attack some of the local wildlife. It's strange because Lisa just wants to go out there and fight, but all of the dinos that it hits wants to go to sleep. The fighting isn't that boring, is it? We then spot an eternal dodo, and because they do produce a lot of eternal eggs, I have a feeling that's going to be important in this mod some way, somehow. I then knock it out, put it to sleep, tame it and name it maggie and maggie's gonna make us lots of eggs day 10 i tamed another lightning pt and i'll give you two guesses what we named her lightning lisa 2 now i've set a rule for myself in this 100 days i am not allowed to breed honestly eternal's kind of easy so if i was to be able to breed some of the higher tier dinos this would just be a super easy run through i want to make it a little bit difficult for myself so every dino i get is always tamed and this way i run the risk of losing something that's a high tier and can't replace it with just a baby i then took lightning lisa one or two i, I don't know which one it is out to go explore the desert and this is where i've discovered that this is where most of the prometheus dinos spawn we'll get to prometheus a little bit later as we flew back to base everything got a little bit eerie looking and we noticed that there were some meteors flying down from the sky. And that's definitely a sign of one of the big bad destroyers that's going to come and fight us on day 100. I think we're pretty safe for now. It's only day 10. Let's just focus on what we need to focus on. Like this purple Stegosaurus. I knocked it out quickly, tamed it, and we named him Homer. I don't know if you noticed, but as we are taming Homer, there was a lava rock golem close by. And we're really close to our base too. So just as an added precaution, I put up these behemoth stone gates just to try and keep out some of the dangers around this world. And to finish off this day, we went over to the snow area to go visit our little penguin friends. Not really. I wanted to slaughter them and go get some oil because we really need oil for some of the stuff back at base. Penguins are stupid. Day 11, I really needed some cementing paste. And because of the early game, I know the best way that we could possibly get it would probably be chitin and stone turning that into cementing paste. Because I don't really know where the beaver dams on this map are. And because I was streaming this live on Twitch, my chat told me of this large underground area, which is basically like the aberration zone. And that's where you can find some Carcanos that dropped tons of chitin. Day 12, we logged back in only to find ourselves dead. I swear we were inside our safe base when we logged out. And also, we don't have a bed to spawn at. So I spawned at an island close to our base, jumped in the water, and swam on back. When we walked into the front door, I noticed that all of our walls were still intact, so I don't know what happened. And I'm pretty sure I had a couple dinos on my body when we died. So yeah, they're gone. Fortunately though, I was smart enough to put Lightning Lisa away in our soul terminal, so at least we didn't lose her. I do know that we did lose Homer, our purple Stego, so I went back out and quickly tamed up another one. I didn't name it though, don't know why. Once tamed, we went around and harvested all that we could, and this is when I noticed that when it hits anything, it actually farms a lot more resources than it traditionally would. This is a little OP and I kind of don't like it. I'm going to do it a little bit for now and I probably won't do it too much throughout this 100 days. On the 13th day of our adventure, I went out to go tame some more powerful dinos. Knowing that Lightning Lisa can knock things out easily, this was going to be our main strategy. I found this flame spino and easily knocked it out. While we're waiting for it to tame, we found a flame quetzal. So I knocked it out too, knowing that it could be pretty handy for us to be able to pick up some of these bigger dinos, which we could possibly use to be able to tame dinos in hopefully a safer location than out in this crazy wilderness. I didn't have the required taming meat to be able to tame these dinos, so I had to rush back to base and craft a thing called alpha meat. Must be a little bit better than normal meat. I also crafted and placed down this vulture nest. It's basically like a mortar and pestle, but it crafts the same things, but cheaper. And we needed narcotics to keep these guys knocked out. I flew on back to the flame spiner, shoved some alpha meat down its throat, and then tamed the thing. But as it tamed, we got attacked. Lightning Lisa went down straight away. I wasn't sure what was happening. And then I got a glimpse of this. The pesky flame guy with the dog mask on. He's back to pester us once again. Luckily, I saved our flame spino just before I died. Now that we're back at the safety of our base, I got our flame spino out, put a saddle on him, and then we jumped in the water. We got to the big depths of the ocean, started swimming on down, and then something bit our butt. Yeah, this Indominus Megalodon. For some reason, it was making my dino's torpor rapidly rise. And uh, yeah, our new flame spino went to sleep and left me alone in the middle of the ocean to die. Back at the safety of our base, I saw this fire PT just sleeping on the edge of this cliff. So I fed it some meat and yeah, now we have a fire PT that we named, of course, you know, Fire Lisa. There was an eternal dodo there too. So of course, I tamed that too. Now that we're making some real progress, it's time to work on our big forever base. Montage incoming.
Day 16 and phase one of our base is finally ready. It's pretty basic looking. I'll dress it up and decorate it a little bit later. But for now, we need to go and tame some more dinos. I fly on out and that's when I spot another flame Quetzal. You might be wondering what happened to the one earlier, right? Well, after we died with all that craziness, uh, I wasn't heading back to go and fight another human with a dog mask on. We had a quick aerial battle. I knocked this Quetzal out and tamed it. I was considering naming this Quetzal, but it probably doesn't make too much sense. So so I decided not to. Now that we have a Quetzal, I wanted to see what it could pick up because ultimately we just want to pick up larger dinos with it. That's the only real use for it. I flew on over, saw this orange Bronto and uh, yeah, we can pick it up. We have to test these things because in mods, a lot of the traditional things that we know don't work. I did though bring this Bronto back to base, tame it and name him Barney. After taming Barney, we went out to do some more exploring and hopefully find some more powerful dinos. We flew on over to the desert and I did see some red fire shadow mains. They could be some possibly good options. Then I flew to the sandy area of the biome and took out a couple mantises. When I got snatched off the back of my PT, I pulled into this blood stalker and immediately killed. After respawning, I couldn't leave Lightning Lisa in the middle of the desert, especially with the creepy spider things around. So I flew back over on Fire Lisa, picked up Lightning Lisa, and then did some more exploring, but not in this area. Instead, we went to the volcano to have a look. Knowing very well it was kind of dangerous, mm, we didn't stick around. Instead, I went AFK above the lush grassy area. Day 18, I spotted a max level Eternal Alpha Pteranodon. This is the next tier that we need to get to. With Lightning Lisa 1, 2, or whichever Lightning Lisa I had, I knocked it out and it landed in the water. Hopefully it doesn't drown. This was also the moment that I learned that on Eternal, flyers can fly underwater. Yeah, if you can't tell, this mod just defies all laws of physics. With that, I quickly tamed it up, brought it back to base so I could name her. And yeah, of course, I give you two guesses what we think we're going to name her. Yes, it's Alpha Lisa. Now, Alpha variants can actually evolve into either a poison or a lightning version. Certain other dinos can turn into different variants, like that cursed PT that we saw earlier. So it cost us 50 blue gems to be able to evolve Alpha Lisa. We started the evolution and we evolved her into a lightning variant. This is Alpha Lightning Lisa. Now that we have Alpha Lightning Lisa, we need to get a saddle, which we can't actually make right now because it requires dino hearts to be able to make it which I don't have. So I went ahead and crafted this industrial grinder. Why? Well, apparently you can craft dino hearts in it, as you can see here. We just need some prime fish meat. And since now I know you can fly underwater, I just took Lightning Lisa out to fly under, knock a couple sharks out, and then just harvest them for their prime meat. This was kind of a slow process and we were running out of oxygen rather quickly. So instead I knocked out this poison megalodon and tamed it. Maybe this might be a quicker way to be able to harvest some fish meat. Day 20 and with our shark, we went straight into the ocean and started to harvest some sashimi. We killed some sharks and then even this basilo, which also helped us solve an oil problem that we were having. After basically being Aquaman for the last day, we finally had exactly what we needed to be able to craft a saddle for Alpha Lightning Lisa. So we flew on out and went back to the desert area. In Eternal, only certain tiers of dinos can knock out a tier above it. So we flew over to the desert area where I was given some info that some dragons were hanging out. And I knew if we could tame ourselves a dragon, it was going to put us in a very, very, very strong position. In the distance, I spotted an alpha dragon fighting that stupid bloodstalker from earlier. I flew quickly in, barrel rolled it in the face, and got myself out of the way from getting spider webbed again. But at this time, I think I caught the attention of a poison dragon at the same time. I had a couple of health potions on me, so I was feeling confident that I wouldn't die. But you never know in this mod. A lot of dinos can knock you off the back of your team. We had an intense aerial battle, just like you would in War Thunder. Back and forth, trying to knock them out. The alpha dragon was the first to drop, and then it was just me and this poison dragon. A couple more hits, and I knocked it out and sent it straight down to the ground. I raced straight over to our alpha dragon, because that's the one I really wanted and I named it Alpha Natsu, after my favorite character from my favorite anime. And to go with the theme of this 100 days, I named the poison one Poison Natsu. Now look at that, we now have a thing of beauty, an Alpha Dragon. Let's go out and see what kind of damage and destruction it can cause. We flew on over right next to the base where there was a large bunch of dinos and just started raining hellfire down on these beasts, doing significant damage, but not only that, significant AoE damage. Eventually, I found these dragonflies and they were my next prey. I hit them, they hit me, and I died. Oh crap. In a state of panic, I grabbed everything I could, flew straight back over to try and rescue my alpha dragon. But once I got over there, a stupid freaking thing knocked me out and I fell asleep, only to just listen to all the craziness going on around me. For some reason, nothing killed me while I was asleep. And when I woke up, my PT was asleep too. We we're just having a nice friendly nap together, I suppose. I fed it a potion to wake it up, 
jumped on its back, flew away, whistled our dragon so it wouldn't die too, and just flew somewhere safe. Day 22, and it's now time for us to evolve our dragon. It's already pretty powerful, but there ain't nothing wrong with getting even more power. We have to feed it 25 prime blood, which fortunately I had laying around our base, and it turned from this red monstrosity into this bright blue godlike dragon. Now, of course, we have to test to see how much better its power really got. Straight over to the same place as before, we lay down some more hellfire, and <laughs> yeah, we're destroying everything. I'm gonna say it's a pretty solid jump up from Alpha. And for the rest of the day, we just went around slaughtering everything we possibly could to try and get some extra levels and some more resources. We even took out this poison dragon, which was rather easy and no longer scary. Day 23, 24, and 25, my main focus was making this greenhouse. I wanted to get some crops down this kind of early because later on I know I'm going to need some of the vegetables in order to craft some higher tier items. If we get it down now, we should have a bunch by the time we need them. Day 26, once again, we woke up dead. But I was super grateful because we went to go check on our greenhouse and it's still there. We just don't know how we died. Fortunately, I was smart enough to put away Prime Natsu in the Soul Terminal. And he was feeling rather hungry, so we went out to go feed him by feeding on all the wildlife around the area. He did then desire the taste for some seafood, so he went into the ocean and got him some calamari. After killing so many dinos, we amassed so much resources and extra loot that we had to create ourselves an industrial grinder so we could get some extra resources. Because why not make the most of it, right? Having Prime Natsu, I was feeling on top of the world, so I figured maybe it was time for us to start fighting some bosses. I went over to this little area on Battle Island. Because it was closed off, I figured it was a nice area to start fighting some bosses. I placed down the boss summoning terminal, and then we summoned in our first boss. I figured a little turkey is not going to be too much trouble. We waited for the boss to summon in, and when it summoned in, I couldn't really see it. It must have been pretty tiny. So I went a little bit closer to try and find where it was, and we started to burn up. Then, as we got really close, a massive explosion happened, and that's when everything went downhill from there. I couldn't see what was going on. Everything was just so chaotic, and... Prime Natsu died. That little tiny turkey did all of that? Imagine what some of the other bosses are gonna do. I was devastated that we just lost our most powerful dino, but I couldn't wait around. I got on Lightning Lisa and started heading back to the desert area because maybe we could tame another one. But on my way there, we got taken out by a prone chief dragon. Just my luck. As far as I know, Alpha Lightning Lisa isn't dead, so I gotta try and race back there, but I don't wanna go unprepared just in case. So we got another Alpha Lisa that we had lying around and quickly evolved it into the poison variant, Alpha Poison Lisa. I flew back over to where Alpha Lightning Lisa was, whistled it so it could follow us, and quickly put it in a soul ball. Now we can continue doing what we were doing and head back to the desert to try and find ourselves another Alpha Dragon. We did get there though, and there was none around. There was a lot of gigas and stuff, but, but no dragons. Day 29, I didn't know what to do. I guess I'm gonna have to wait until some spawn in the desert. So I went on over to the boss area because I know there's some dung beetles and we could probably use them to create some fertilizer for our farm. I did remember though that we did have poison nuts too. Unfortunately, it's just not the same. The morning of day 30 we made a discovery right next to our base was a prime pteranodon now the only way to knock these out is with the alpha tier dino that has torpor damage ability i took our poison lisa over smacked it around a couple times and made it go to sleep in the water fortunately it had some meat on us so i quickly tamed it up and took it back to base now you can evolve prime pts as well i already had all the right materials with us so i immediately started evolving this prime pt once evolved we now have ourselves a prime poison pteranodon that we named Prime Poison Lisa. Surely by now it's been enough time for us to head on back over to the desert to see if we can tame ourselves an Alpha Dragon. Having a Prime Poison Lisa, surely it's going to be a lot easier to knock him out. We head on over and sure enough, there we have it, an Alpha Dragon. We started the aerial combat and of course, we got joined in by another dragon. A poison one of all things too. Once knocked out, we tamed it and we successfully have ourselves another Natsu. I mean, we might as well take the poison dragon as well anyway. We now have an alpha Natsu, but we don't have enough prime blood to be able to evolve it just yet. So I went over to the Redwoods and tamed this Prime Blood Bug Jug. That's a tongue twister. Because it passively produces Prime Blood. We took it back home, waited for it to produce a little bit of Prime Blood, and stole it right out of its butt. Now we have enough Prime Blood to evolve our Alpha Natsu. Once evolved, we named this Prime Natsu 2. Now it's evolved, we went back over to the desert area and fought some dragons because killing these guys specifically gives you a ton of experience. When we did kill one though, we did come up against a spectral dragon. And after a little bit of fighting, fighting this ghost-like invisible-ish dragon, we killed it and gained a ton more levels. Later that day, I was notified that there's an element jug bug in this Redwoods area. So I swiftly flew over there as fast as I could so I could be able to tame this thing. Once I got there, I quickly shot it and knocked it out. Then I fed it some berries. Once I was waiting for it to tame, 
one of my Patreons was on, so we were just slaughtering all the wildlife around. But through all the carnage, on Eternal, when you kill certain dinosaurs, they have a chance of summoning in a really high tier dino. For example, this purple bear. His name is Simpleton. We fought it and it killed us straight off the back of this tame. I thought a purple bear would be kind of huggy and lovey. It's not. I arrived back at location and I had to knock out the element jug bug once again. But that's when this happened. Yeah, we got killed by a titan god. And we lost our second prime dragon already. Day 32, I was feeling kind of sad. So I just did some gardening. And then doing a little bit of research, I learned that you could make an evo compi in one of the boss summoning terminals. Now over time, you can evolve these compies into something that's called the armored dark star. So we're going to try and do this but it's gonna take us quite a few days. So we'll, we'll get through it over the process of this video. I needed something more powerful once again. So I grabbed my poison Lisa and flew back over to the desert area to see if we could find a decent dragon. Unfortunately, the only dragons that were around were low level. So they're all pretty useless to us. Then I thought, let's go check out the volcano area and see if there's any decent wyverns. They're strong, right? And that's when we found this eternal alpha wyvern. I got its attention and then I led it away from the volcano area. I didn't want to bring any more attention from other wyverns around the area. Once I got it to a safe location, I did my best to knock it out and then I tamed it. And we named this flying lizard alpha dragneal. Day 33 and we now have an alpha dragneal. But uh, let's just evolve it straight into a prime. We need some prime blood first though. So I yoink this out of the jug bug's butt, shove it straight into my alpha dragneal and evolve it into the prime wyvern. Of course, we name it prime dragneal. I went straight out to see how much power it had and it's nowhere near as good as the dragon, but it's gonna have to make through for now. Eventually, I want to evolve it once again into an unknown wyvern. That'll increase its power. While we're out burning all the locals, I saw what looked to be a tech griffin in the distance. In this mod, it's called a wicked griffin. And I know anything in this mod with a special name like that has to be a pretty decent dino to tame. I quickly went to this location and started building a trap because I wanted to do this right. Once the trap was built, I got my alpha PT, went over to the wicked griffin and got its attention. Once we had its attention, we made it follow us, trying not to die from all the explosions it causes and let it on into the trap. Oh wait, it didn't, it didn't actually go into the trap this time. Okay, round two. Let's try this again. It's following me this time. I slowly lead it into the trap and we get it successfully in. I can get out through one of these cracks here, so I'm not too concerned. Now we just have the problem of trying to knock it out. I shot it with a trank, but it did nothing. But that's when my Twitch chat told me that only certain other dinos can knock this out that are a higher tier than what I've got. I was told that apparently there's these big bright green titan boas that you can tame. So I went on over to the green grassy area on the back of my wyvern and looked for one. Once I found one, I picked it up and brought it all the way back to base so I could have a decent place to be able to tame this beast. I got its tall pole down a little bit and went to shoot it again when it killed me in one hit. Fortunately, we tried again, shot it, and then this one took it out. I now tamed the big green serpent, also known as Lealphus Cretoliodus, or whatever the frick it's called. I didn't waste any time. I went straight back over to the trap where the wicked griffin was and started shooting it down with the special abilities that this big snake has. A few hits in and this is where I made my super stupid mistake. I went a little bit close to the door and forgot that they were automatic doors. So the door opened and let the griffin out. Fortunately for us, the griffin had already had enough torpor damage done on it that it ended up being knocked out not too far away from us. So I took this opportunity and tamed this wicked griffin. I put it in a soul ball, brought it back to base and then threw it out. Side note, our little evo compi from earlier is ready to be evolved. So we evolved it into this evo raptor. Now back to the wicked griffin. I went back and named him Barris. And then we had to go see how much power this guy had. And as you can see, this guy is a beast doing over 70,000 damage. But not only that, his AoE attack slaughters everything in sight. Day 35, we went out to the desert to go and fight some of the weaker dinos that we could absolutely slay on. For example, this dodo. This dodo must be weak because it killed us. Wait, what? We died. We got killed by a dodo. Luckily though, our wicked griffin didn't die, only us. And I had an awesome tracker on it, so I can just teleport him back to me wherever I am in the world. My next mission, I wanted to start collecting some element. And one way to do that is to kill prone dinos, as most of them drop element. I really wanted to make a tech replicator so I could make a tech transmitter so that we could find some specific dinos that we could tame. Day 36, I put down this two times shield generator that I found in the Prometheus workbench. This thing projects a shield that is massive. So now hopefully I'm not gonna have any problems with all the dangerous creatures in this world. I then went ahead and made an extension to our base. This little pathway and area is gonna be where the tech replicator is gonna sit. Now all we need is enough element to be able to craft ourselves a tech replicator. 
so I flew on over to the desert where I found this element node. Again, if you defeat all the waves of dinos that come through on these, it gives you a ton of element. So we started the process trying to kill all the dinos coming through. It felt a little bit one-sided because all the dinos that came through were at a vanilla level and we're riding Xerath that does over 3 million damage. I feel like this is a little bit too easy, but it's still very time consuming. We kept running through all the waves of dinos until this happened. We got glitched into this node and we couldn't move at all. So I did the only thing I thought I could do and teleported back to base. After that, we quickly rushed back to the element node and poof, it was gone. So yeah, gotta love some of Ark's mechanics. Although we didn't get the element from the element node, I did manage to kill some prone dinos that did give us enough element to craft a tech replicator. I just forgot to record that part. So of course we placed down this tech replicator. Tech replicator down, we can now craft ourselves a tech S plus transmitter, which allowed us to learn that there's an element jug bug in the desert. So we flew straight on over there and I found it and I shot it and it went to sleep but when i put some berries in it it ate it too quick and uh yeah it, it didn't tame so i had to rush back to base get some more berries and rush back to the element jug bug to feed it again but once again not enough berries and its torpor was dropping rapidly final time i went back to base picked up a ton of berries went back to the jug bug fed it and now it is forever our element slave now that we don't have an element problem anymore i placed down some more s plus transmitters and then headed on off over to the redwoods i had heard that the space panda is quite the powerful creature even significantly better than our wicked griffin and the only way i know to be able to spawn them in is by killing higher tier dinos so i went on over there and figured that these eternal dominus overses would be a two for one special i need indominus tokens anyway and they're likely to spawn something in plus mass murdering dinos is a is you know kind of fun we killed tons of dinos but nothing was spawning in until this moment that we looked up into the sky and there was these blue flame meteors falling right towards us at that point i had a feeling i know what this is his name is morph's death from below this is a small little red glowing pelovia that can destroy anything within like a one kilometer radius and i knew i had to tame this beast so i teleported back to base so i could regroup all my things the following day i returned back on my big green snake fortunately morph's death from below didn't have a lot of torpor in comparison to the damage my snake could do to its torpor and we knocked it out really quickly unfortunately there was a really annoying terror bird there but we put that to sleep too once Morph was knocked out, we quickly tamed it, and now we have the most powerful dino that we could have ever experienced in this mod so far. Once we tamed this bad boy, I didn't name him. Morph is a really cool name anyway. Let's roll with that. I then went on out and tested out its abilities. Its AoE attack is bloody dangerous look at that my entire screen is filled up with tons of deaths except when we did kill a few dinos it spawned in a couple stronger ones like these purple giraffes but they were easy to deal with just took a couple extra hits finally the rng in this mod was working in my favor so as you naturally would do i just went around the entire redwoods just destroying everything there was really no dino that i feared even this red glowing indominus dragon we might be tiny but it may be dead I even had a ton of fun around our base just destroying everything. It even clears out all the trees. Even resurrected dinos like this trike here don't stand a chance against us. I was curious to find out what happened if I stood behind my shield and did the same attack. And yeah, basically it just destroys everything outside of the shield. But that's when I noticed this. See that griffin? That's a silver wing. And I know that they are probably the most powerful dino that you can get in this game. I had to tame this bird at all costs. So I got the green snake out once again, rushed it on over, and started to trank it. It was at this moment I realized I fed up. Our green snake died, and that was the only hope that we possibly had to be able to tame the silver knight. But I couldn't give up. This was an opportunity I definitely could not miss. The only hope that I really had was to be able to evolve my prime wyvern into an unknown poison wyvern. But I didn't have enough resources just yet. I needed more indom tokens and some dino DNA. So the next day, I took more stuff from below straight back to the redwoods and slaughtered everything I possibly could, especially aiming for anything that drops indominus tokens. I mainly aim for the sheep because they'll kind of squish and easy to kill once we had enough tokens that we needed we raced straight back to base i put it into our prime drag neo and watched the evolution start now we have an unknown poison drag neo now unknown wyverns can actually knock out basically every tier of dino and they do a ton of torpor damage i had to play this smart though because silver knight could pretty much one hit me and my wyvern and since i can't replace this wyvern easily i'm just gonna have to try my best i kind of cheesed it a little bit by using the tech shield as my cover i would start my lightning attack and charge on over to it to hit it a little bit and then run back straight to the shield for safety as we're well doing this though i got a death notice that my evo raptor died 
died. I went to go check on it, and then I was killed off the back of this unknown poison wyvern by a resurrected dodo wyvern. It must have got inside the bubble somehow. I respawned, jumped straight back on the back of my wyvern, and flew on out to go see what was happening. I noticed my wicked griffin, Barris, was fighting the resurrected dodo wyvern. Barris is a real one, protecting all the other stuff in my base. He even sacrificed himself for us. Thank you, Barris, for your sacrifice. I couldn't let Barris's name go in vain, so I had to tame the Silver Knight. The Griffin got a little bit distracted by something in the rocks here. I couldn't quite see what it was, but because it was distracted, we had an easier chance at knocking it out. I continued attacking it until it decided to try and run away. For some reason, it got stuck in our shield, and that's when we put it to sleep. Now we have our very own Silver Knight. I took him to a safe location, and I named him Zerif after the main antagonist of my favorite anime, Fairy Tail. Now that we have a super OP bird, I wanted to see how much power he really had once tamed. We went out and I went back over to that rock to see what he was trying to attack, and it was this purple giraffe. And with doing almost 2.5 million damage, the purple giraffe didn't stand a chance. Zerif here is a game changer, so I had to drip him up a little bit. We went back to base and we made this tech griffin armor. We put it on him and there he is. He looks good. Now, at this point of the game, I made a rule for myself. Because Eternal is essentially quite easy, I cannot breed any dinos. So if I lose Zerif, I lose him for good. And I have to go out and try and find another one. With Zerif on hand, I went back over to the Wyvern Volcano to seek some revenge on them bullying me earlier in this 100 days. It was kind of satisfying seeing scaly lizards just fall from the sky. With that satisfaction done, it's time to pimp out myself. And I gave myself a nice little haircut to try and suit my signature look. Now that we have this top tier dino, I think it's time for us to start fighting some bosses. I went over to the boss arena that I made and summoned in this mystical Bigfoot. I was kind of nervous because we saw how we went earlier with the turkey, but hopefully Zeref can hold up against this. The mystical Bigfoot spawned in with 165 million health, but it was no match against our Zeref. We turned Bigfoot back into the myth it really is. One of the things though, when you kill a boss, another boss immediately spawns. And this was a mystical Bigfoot, but hard mode. And this spawned in with 336 million health, but it also had a damage reduction on it as well. Again, this fight wasn't as hard, but it just took a little bit longer than it normally would. I suppose the advantage is we can fly. Continuing on this boss hunt, we then fought a mystical rhino, an ursa major, and a bionic magmasaur. I'm probably going to skip over most of these fights because all you can really see is damage numbers and explosions. But you get the idea. Then through all this boss fighting, I got a full set of mystical eternal armor which is basically manticore armor that gives you a few buffs and has crazy armor stats i went back to go fight some more bosses when all of a sudden i started tripping balls on some mushrooms i don't even remember eating them once the drugs wore off we started fighting this mystical wyvern this was a little bit more difficult as it is a flyer it could keep up with us and it was hard for us to be able to aim our attacks but again xerif is just so op that it didn't last very long and we continued fighting more bosses until we met one of the hardest matches yet the titan god we started fighting it and it had massive damage reduction and a huge pool of health but it also seems to have an ability to create a clone of the dino that you're riding so we ended up having to fight another Zeref, which eventually killed me and Zeref. this was absolutely heartbreaking we finally made it to a top tier dino that was impossible to get and we lost him already in a fit of rage, I went straight back to base, jumped on the back of Morph, and went and destroyed everything and anything I could possibly see. So much so, we got kicked from the server. We continued the destruction on day 43 as well, hoping maybe we might be able to spawn in another Zerif, or even something equally or better. Day 44, we're back in the Redwoods, and we're trying to respawn a Zerif somehow. And that's when I got notified from a friend on the server that there was another Silver Knight on the map. And yes, I actually play through these 100 days on servers online that any one of my Patreons, Twitch subscribers, or YouTube members can join while i'm playing through if you want to host your own server use my g portal link below for 10 percent off so my friend on the server told me about a bacon overlord and another silver knight on the map i raced straight over there and all i wanted was a xerif even though the bacon overlord might be better i don't know but i wanted my xerif back i kited it back to my shield and did the same taming method as before and then tamed this girl oh boy i, I don't remember what it is and of course once tamed we named it xerif 2 now that we're back in the game i didn't waste any time and i went straight back to fighting some bosses this time the mystical armored giga again another pretty easy fight day 45 i don't really remember where but i found this alpha rock drake egg and i wanted to hatch it i didn't have any egg on so i couldn't hatch it normally so i put it in the egg incubator to crack it once we cracked them we got twins so i named them after some of the people in my twitch chat link 1900 and zika or zeka or whatever you want to call that 
Oh yeah, I also crafted another Evo Compi since we lost the Evo Raptor. Hopefully this time it'll last the distance. I then went back over to our boss fighting arena on my Poison Wyvern. This time, no, not to fight a boss. I summoned in an Ancient Manticore. These are boss tier dinos that you can tame. We watched it summon in and it took out a Titanosaur. <laughs> which was kind of creepy. I wasn't sure of its power levels or how much damage it could do to me, so I wanted to keep my distance while shooting it down. It didn't have a lot of torpor and we were doing a ton of torpor damage. It also wasn't a super high level either, but we'll take it. We then put it in a soul ball and then took it back to base. I wanted to craft a saddle for it, but it didn't seem to have one in the workbench. But fun fact, if you craft an alpha wyvern saddle, that can go on any dino. We then took it out for its first test flight. And honestly, it's not that great in comparison to our Xerath at least. But once flying, it does look pretty damn cool. I kind of like the blue and red look. I don't know, rate it out of 10 in the comments below. Day 46, I crafted this ascender and placed it down on my ocean lookout platform thingy. This will allow me to ascend my character past level 100. I then had to create myself a tribe and I named it the Simp Sons. Why? Because I wanted to ally with a friend on the server. And in the alliance, we named it Subscribe to Mr. Miola. I then went and allied with this person right here. Her name is Lucy. I really just wanted to be able to go and check out her base and see what she had going on. She's made a little bit more progress than we have at this point, And this is her base. 47th day of this adventure, we took the next step in the bosses and started fighting the Harbinger bosses. First up was the Ankyo. These guys are a little bit easier than the Mysticals, I think. Or we're just better. Once we killed the Harbinger, it gave us these items that allow us to summon in some dinos. First, we summoned in this red wolf jinx then we summoned in this glowing purple dung beetle they produce resources over time if you feed them eternal kibble but you have to leave them on wander that's why i trapped them here in my little dungeon aka my old little base day 48 we continued on killing these harbinger bosses starting off with the orange glowing harbinger beaver then we killed the yellow glowing harbinger doed with these two harbingers dead we gained two more slave beetles i then went back out to finish off the rest of these harbinger bosses as they were quite easy next was the green frog the harbinger beetle buffer and finally the blue penguin the harbinger kairuku now that we've collected all these colorful beetles I wanted to build a little place for them that they can call their home. I put lodestones in them so they wouldn't move around while I put them on Wanda. You can make them in jug bugs. And here they are in all their glory, standing all together in a line, kind of looking like the Beetle Power Rangers. And with that little renovation that we did, I figured now would be a good time to be able to change up some of my base and make it look more aesthetically pleasing. Here's a little glimpse of the base that we've built so far. Actually, this will probably be it for the whole 100 days. I don't know if we need anything else. Since we've made some decent progress, I think it's time to step it up a notch in the boss fighting. I placed down these other boss summoners as they summon in harder bosses. And then, of course, we just went ahead and summoned in the next hardest boss we could find. It was this Ghost Saber. We easily destroyed the shit out of this ghostly pussycat, but it was followed up by some other harder bosses. So we spent the rest of the day fighting more bosses. Day 50, and I was kind of getting a little bit bored of fighting bosses, so I really just spent the entire day exploring starting at the desolate volcano area i didn't realize there was a larger area behind it just full of dead trees then we went back to the desert which we've done plenty of exploring before anyway and then back home day 51 in between fighting bosses we evolved our evo raptor into the evo kano we were also lucky enough to be able to summon in a firecracker which is like a flame Velenosaur, but super powerful. Day 52, I discovered that you could summon in more different variants of the Evo summons. The first one we summoned was the Evo Pegamastex. And the second one we summoned was the Evo Arche. I'm curious to see what they'll fully evolve into, but we'll do our best to get through it during this 100 days. Then we went back to go fight some more bosses, this time the Dark Star, but in hard mode. And this was easily our hardest fight yet. I made sure I stocked up on potions because it was doing a ton of damage to us and pushing us all around the boss arena. We eventually got stuck in this wall and I just kept attacking from there until we finally finished off the Armored Dark Star. Day 53, again fighting some bosses, but this time we faced off against our nemesis, the Titan God, the one that destroyed my Xerath earlier. This time Lucy came over to help because I really didn't want to lose Xerath again. I made sure to keep my distance this time knowing very well if another Xerath spawned in, I was out of there. But again, we got this win thanks to our help from Lucy. Day 54, right out the front of our base, we tamed this mountain dragon. We're a lot further ahead in this mod, so it's not as strong as we kind of need but it does look pretty cool so i had to tame it then when i went out to do a little bit of an exploring i spotted a shenron the great dragon and it was alongside a bacon overlord i think there's one little spot on this map is a high tier dino spawn area and the shenron the great dragon 
Dude, I had to tame that. When I went to Soul Wallet though, it apparently doesn't go in Soul Walls. So I had to fly it all the way back to base. Now I couldn't really leave that Bacon Overlord out there by itself. After all, since I can't breed dinos, it'll probably be a good thing to be able to have this as a backup to my Xerath. So I spent the rest of the day just trying to tame this, watching my back as I didn't want to die. The Poison Wyvern we are on is quite valuable. And I tamed this Bacon Overlord and named him Guildarts. I must say, today was a very, very successful taming day. Day 55, we decided to clean up our base a little bit. We had so much extra armor from killing all the bosses and creatures on the map that I just chucked them basically all in the grinder and grinded them down for extra resources. Then I moved a couple of our dinos around to try and tidy this place up after we had just tamed a few extra dinos that I want to keep on display. Day 56, we started off this lovely day by evolving some of our Evo creatures, including this Evo Kano into an Evo Allosaurus. Then, thanks to our S Plus transmitter, I found out that there was an Eternal Indominus Dodo Reaper just down the ways from us. So I took my unknown poison Dragneel over there just so we could tame it. Day 57, we now have an Eternal Indominus Dodo Reaper. I went straight out to go see if it was strong. It's pretty strong, just not as strong as our Xerath, obviously. But its best advantage is because it's a Reaper variant, it does have some pretty decent damage reduction. Later in the day, I decided I wanted to go out and tame some more Ancients. So we started off by taming this Ancient Blue Megapithecus this orangey brown colored dodo rex and then finish it off by taming this big orange bigfoot giganopithecus thingy after a big day of taming and craziness i finished it off by evolving this archer into a featherlight day 58 i went into the aberration zone with one mission on mind i wanted to find ourselves a glow pet why we are planning to fight the final boss in eternal the dark hero fan and because it's a reaper i figured having a glow pet might help us with getting extra damage we've done some mass exploring down here we even went to the surface zone which really wasn't on the surface i had to go down to get there it was weird i then found this elemental lightning blue glow tail quickly tamed it and then continued exploring this aberration zone it's such a big area i wanted to see what else was around we even made it to the red zone it looked kind of dangerous so we teleported straight out of there day 59 i wanted to see if i could squeeze some extra power out of my xerath so i had the idea of placing down an s plus mutator and imprinting it this might be a little cheesy but it comes in the mod pack so why not use it i wasn't sure if it was going to work but when we tried it it seemed to have worked so we just did it over and over and over again spent the entire day imprinting our xerath day 60 our friend lucy on the server asked if she could have a xerath so i kindly said yes and we were just going to clone my one so i set up the cloner and started the cloning process while we're waiting for it to clone, I took down our original first starter base. Everything was starting to get a little cluttered, so I needed to make some more space around our base area. Then, by the end of the day, the cloning was finished. And Lucy now has her very own Xerath. She'll probably clone it again and maybe try and breed it or something. I don't know. Day 61, I basically went AFK. Now, the reason being is I had to wait for most of my dinos to heal up. Because on this day, day 62, we are going to fight the Dark Hero fan. I placed down all of the dinos that I possibly think could stand up against this boss. I placed out all my ancients that I brought, the new Indominus Dodo Rex, and just a ton of others that maybe could do some damage. Then we summoned in the Dark Hero fan. And as soon as we did, basically he wiped out every dino that was around the boss area. Yeah, this isn't good. Anyway, I went straight into fight. I had a lot of healing potions, so this should be pretty straightforward. Once we were fighting it, we got it stuck into a corner and I just kept munching away, draining his health rather slowly but we weren't dying so that's a good thing right until this happened it knocked us way into the sky and out of render which basically means if you go out of render any one of the eternal bosses just disappear so again we started the fight once again but this time it was just one on one and instead of getting it stuck in the rock i figured i'd get myself stuck in the rock so when it does that massive pushback attack it can't push me out of render i had lucy there as backup as well as i knew i had enough health potions to keep myself alive but this was just going to take a long time to get it down it's already the end of day 63 and we've only got it down to half health day 64 and we're still going fighting the dark hero fan as you can see you can't really see much so we're just going to skip right to the end and i'll show you what happened we got the victory over the dark hero fan i won't lie my fingers hurt a lot after clicking for over an hour day 65 and we've beaten the final boss of eternal now to celebrate by evolving the Evo Kano into this Evo Rex. Day 66, we may have defeated basically the entire Eternal mod, but now it's time to start working on the Prometheus mod. My first tame off the rank was this Prome Allosaurus. Things are made a little bit easier with us having the Poison Wyvern. Again, my rules for this 100 days is I can only fight the bosses of certain mods with creatures from that particular mod. So I can't bring Xerath to fight Prometheus bosses. Secondly, we tame this Prome Griffin which I immediately took back to base, made a saddle for it, took it to the edge of this cliff here so I could have a real good look at it. 
props to whoever designed this it looks pretty damn cool now let's go see if it's strong 6k well yeah nah it's not really that strong in comparison to eternal but it's probably decent for prometheus i wonder if we evolve it it could be even stronger i'm assuming it will be there's three different variants that you can evolve it into flame lightning or power we decided to go with flame who doesn't like fire dinos they're cool as fuck now it's not much stronger but it's flame attack does some serious damage over time although i am happy with this griffin i need something a little bit stronger i did some research and i found out that you need a power dino in order to be able to progress easier in this mod so i went out on my poison dragneel hunted down a prone dragon and tamed it we named this prone dragon sting again after another character from fairy tale we had to discover if sting was going to be powerful enough to be able to progress in this prometheus mod and doing 18k damage with only a couple levels put into him he's pretty decent let's see what he does with a few more levels put into him 24k damage that's a good start but we need more and the best way to get some more power out of this guy obviously is to evolve him into a power sting oh yeah now we're talking 80k damage per hit i had also discovered that there was a prone dodo wyvern on the map and maybe that might be stronger than our prone dragon let's find out so we went straight over and tamed this chicken wyvern then we quickly teleported him back to base and named him rogue without being evolved he is pretty strong but uh on day 69 we're just gonna have to evolve him straight into the most powerful thing we could i'd like you to meet power rogue now he's evolved let's see if he's any good at doing any damage i went on out and uh he's he's not really that good i thought he would be a lot better i don't really like the way he flies too it's a bit janky so i decided to stick with our good old friend power sting and this was our first ever mini boss fight we're fighting the slaughter u tyrannosaurus it does have some damage reduction on it so we're only doing 21k damage per hit we got the win but it did take a little while we need to collect a ton of resources from prometheus to be able to progress through this mod all the mini bosses drop hearts and other items that we need to be able to summon in the next tier dino because in prometheus only certain dinos can actually inflict damage to certain bosses day 71 and 72 we went ham slaughtering all the prone bosses we possibly could we basically need four hearts from each one of these mini bosses so that we can summon in our own version of a mini boss or as what some people call the cube dino day 73 i noticed that i could evolve my prone power dragon once again so i did and that's basically when i found out that it was worthless and that's not how it works i thought it would get even more powerful but but it doesn't the next day i evolved this evo featherlight into an evo dinonychus slowly making our way all the way to the top we then went ahead and evolved our evo giga into the evo indominus rex i then went back to go fight some eternal bosses because i needed more primordial essence that only drops from eternal bosses just so i could continue evolving these creatures day 76 77 and 78 the grind continues as we had to kill more bosses to gather some more resources day 79 i had another big brain move well kind of we did this before let's see if we can imprint our power prone dragon now you're probably thinking what's so big brain about that well let me tell you i placed five s plus mutators down around the dragon so i could only do it once instead of waiting in between imprints it clearly worked and now look we're doing over 41,000 damage this will make taking down bosses at least twice as fast day 80 we continued this grind and went out like the royal rumble and started smashing through all these bosses day 81 and the end is closely creeping up we can now evolve our indominus rex into its final form the armored dark star once fully evolved we gave it its name and we named it kakashi then we went out to go see what kind of damage it can do and over half a million damage per hit this is pretty impressive I then went back to go fight some more eternal bosses as I still needed more primordial essence to evolve my other evo creatures. Uh, and that's when Dude, this happened. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah, I'm a freaking idiot. So I had to run around and try and hope that Zeref wouldn't die. I tried to keep my distance. Luckily, I did have decent armor so nothing wouldn't kill me easily. And then I looked behind me and the armored dark star was chasing us. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, he's coming. <laughs> Phew, that was a lucky escape. Anyway, I won't make any more mistakes accidentally dismounting. We finished off this Dark Star and then a Bacon Nemesis spawned in. This was a humongous big red Indominus Rex. Luckily, our Xerath is super strong because we took this one out really easily. But straight after that, a Bacon Nemesis tameable version came in. And like, I couldn't miss this opportunity. I got my Poison Wyvern out and knocked it out as quick as I possibly could. Once tamed, we named this big red beast Endeavor. Because it kind of reminds me of Endeavor from My Hero Academia. Now we have our own big bad bacon nemesis. I had to go see what it could do. We took it straight out, done its major attack, and bro, look at all those deaths. This is like morphs, but on a whole other level. 
I got a little bit carried away. I literally went all over the map just destroying everything. It was just so much damn fun. I know we have a main mission here, but uh, <laughs> I had to do this. Day 83 and we're back on our main mission. We're back around grinding out more of these items that we need to collect to be able to summon in our very own cube dino. Day 84, we're continuing this grind. It's so much fun. Day 85, I had an idea of taming another prone dragon and this dragon we're going to use for a specific cause. So I tamed this one up, took it back to base, evolved it quickly into a power power dragon and thanks to the eternal mod i can actually pick it up and put it on my shoulder this way with its dragon breath attack hopefully it can attack from the side of my shoulder while i'm attacking on my normal prone dragon in theory it'll work so let's go test it out on osiris the prone dragon boss now osiris can only be affected by damage through the dragon breath that's the only thing that can damage it as you can see we're doing very minimal damage but we have enough health potions that we can hold ourselves up and this is just going to take a long time day 86 we're ever so closer to be able to summon in our very own cube dino and get to the next tier of this mod we just have to kill these final few bosses to be able to move on we continued on running around on our behemoth causing some mass damage well kinda we tried killing some more bosses but it was kind of underwhelming and i think it's more effective to do this on our power dragon i'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board i'm not too sure what's causing this but i kind of thought that the cube dinos were going to be significantly stronger day 89 i added a mod in it's called combat trainer this allows you to multiply your melee and your health stat once you kill a certain amount of dinos in our case once you kill 50 dinos your stats will increase then the only problem with this mod is it actually doesn't work on our behemoth which i was really hoping it would but on our power prone dragon it works perfectly day 90 and our power prone dragon is jacked this makes taking out bosses so much quicker and so much easier. So much quicker, in fact, we already have enough resources to be able to summon in our next cube dino. Admittedly, this one's a lot cheaper than the behemoth was, so that's why it was quicker. We are summoning in our very own Slaughter Uteranosaurus. Look at this beauty. It's great to have one. We took it straight out to train it in some combat, but uh, the mod doesn't work on this dino. Rip. Day 91, we head back out on our power prone dragon. I'm really trying to think of ways to be able to progress through this mod because only cube dinos can cause any damage to the higher tier dinos in this mod. Anything else below does nothing. I thought about it for a while and we're just going to have to see what happens with our behemoth and slaughter you Tyrannosaurus. I get on the back of Sting, our power prone dragon, fly up to this mountain peak and find this little crevice in between these rocks. That's where I place down my slaughter you Tyrannus and then summon in my behemoth. I then go get the attention of this Kamatachi Argy, kite it all the way over to my cube dinos and send them in to attack this big red bird. For the start of this fight, I just hide away on my power prone dragon. And then I decided I wanted to get into the fight. So I ran on over and then did my best to jump on the back of my behemoth and started fighting this bird until it decided to stand still and start glowing. I kind of thought the server had lagged or something. Oh, was I wrong? What happened was it evolved into this Kamatachi Manticore and this was going to change our game forever. The Manticore straight away slaughtered our very own Slaughter U Tyrannosaurus. On the back of our behemoth, we were barely doing it any damage. But I did see in the corner there, it says that it is tameable. Maybe this might be the solution. So I quickly teleported back to base, grabbed my poison wyvern and flew straight back over to try and tame this big bad beast. I hit it once and realized, oh, it doesn't actually have a torpor bar. So this was a very bad move. I tried flying away to make my escape, but I just wasn't fast enough to outrun this big manticore. I did have enough healing potions to be able to make our way all the way back to base with the manticore on our tail. And then yes, we're finally in the safety of our base. Protected by our shield, I jumped straight on the back of our behemoth and went straight back over to fight this manticore. I went back in, gave it one hit, turned around, and noticed it had no interest in me anymore. Then I saw Shenron come straight out to fight. The Manticore has gotten inside our base and our shield is down. And that's when this all happened. Bro, how's my shield down? Oh, no, it's inside. My base is... What the... No! They can't do any damage to the Manticore. Oh, my wife has gone. No! Everything blue's gone. Oh my God, my beetles. Oh, Oh, no. We logged back in only to find out that we were dead. I swam back over to the base and realized that our Jinx was still alive at least. I noticed that at the top of our hill, massive relief, Zerif was still alive. Thank you. We jumped on the back of Zerif and noticed our behemoth was still in the fight. Maybe we can come back from this. Nope, we can't. Our behemoth is now dead. And now the manticore's on our tail. Please fly away, please fly away, please fly away. And this is when the unthinkable happened. Zerif died. Well, there you guys have it. As you can see, we're left with no base. 
and no dinos. There's really not much else I can do in this 100 days with 9 days left. So we're just going to call it there. I'm sorry it didn't end like we all thought it would. Until next time, peace.